it's been an amazing year. And if you're new to the uh, Crisis Mappers Network, welcome to the team. We really look forward to your contributions throughout the next few months and years ahead. If you've been here before and you were at the last conference, it's great to have you back. It's definitely been a very uh, defining year for crisis mapping. And we'd expected about 200 participants. We actually got double. So thank you very much for taking the time to make it today. The Crisis Mappers Network now, as compared, as compared to last year, has a thousand, almost 1,000 members uh, in about 30 countries. And about 100 organizations are here uh, represented in this room today. Our website, the crisismappers.net website, has been accessed by no fewer than 104 countries worldwide. So it's truly an international network. And the, the purpose of this network is to catalyze communication, collaboration, and partnerships among members. And our mission then is to advance the study and the application, the practice of crisis mapping worldwide. One of the ways that we accomplish our mission is with this international conference, an annual conference where we bring together high-level policy makers together with seasoned humanitarian and human rights practitioners, the technology community, both the private sector and nonprofit groups, and of course also the research and academic community. And we also pursue our mission by providing our members with this dedicated social networking platform where they can contribute with blogs, they can engage in discussion forums online, they can watch series of rather unique video presentations on crisis mapping projects, and also get engaged and contribute to regular seminars. And the Crisis Mappers Network also has a dedicated Google group, uh, Listserv, that allow our members to communicate and collaborate, especially during crises. This Listserv, the uh, Crisis Mappers Google group, actually played a pivotal role in the hours and days and weeks following the earthquake in Haiti. Our members exchanged thousands of emails on this Google group, um, sharing critical information ranging from satellite imagery to GIS data to uh, contact information for key organizations and personnel on the ground, IDP camp locations, you name it. There was a lot of information sharing, and I highly recommend a study that my colleague Jen Zemke uh, conducted on this response. It's available online at the crisismappers.net homepage, and it details hundreds and hundreds of examples of exactly how this network, many of you here, collaborated in response to the uh, disaster. Speaking of this disaster and the responses that, to this disaster in Haiti, it really was an unprecedented response in, in many ways. One way, as many of us know, was the number of technology platforms that were deployed, many of them from scratch, in the wake of the disaster. And another interesting, significant, in a way, departure was how active a volunteer network that sprung up to address a number of different projects uh, actually followed through and accomplished some things that I think most of us didn't expect would actually happen. And this volunteer network was composed largely of uh, students, uh, many of them from Tufts University, the Fletcher School across the street, as well as undergraduate students, and many of them here are actually here today with us, so I hope you engage them. In addition to the student network, we had some 2,000 volunteers from about 40 countries around the world, mostly from the Haitian diaspora, who were actively involved in the disaster response. Now, interestingly enough, none of them were actually physically in Haiti, but they were still able to play a very important role in the operational response because they set up and created these open, collaborative networks and used these open source, free mapping technologies. Now, the unprecedented nature um, of this response does represent an important opportunity. There's, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, the fact that it was unprecedented, unprecedented obviously means that it was reactive. It was ad hoc and mostly, if not completely, unprepared. Nevertheless, I think the response definitely shows a clear potential. And I think it is up to the members of this network to now grab this opportunity that exists and turn this potential into an actuality. 
The political will is definitely there. I've seen it in a number of upcoming conferences right before this one, talking to a number of colleagues in the humanitarian and technology community. Everybody does want to collaborate. The technology community, as we know, is becoming a more and more important actor in both the humanitarian and the human rights space. We talked about the volunteer networks. They're not necessarily new, per se, but their collaboration, the collaboration between dedicated volunteers and the technology community, I think, presents some really interesting new opportunities, not only for disaster response, but very much beyond in other sectors. So the question now is, at least one of the principal questions, is how do we take these energetic, um, distributed, ad hoc networks and allow them to interface effectively and in a timely way with more structured humanitarian organizations? One possibility uh, that a few colleagues and I have been thinking about is perhaps setting up a crisis mappers task force, a standby crisis mappers task force that would be composed of professional volunteers who have been engaged and have the skills um, and have been engaged in the disaster response to other crisis mapping efforts, but not only the volunteer network, but also have some seasoned professional humanitarians on this task force as well, because we absolutely need to learn from them for this to work. And we hope that other professional volunteer communities, like our good friends at Crisis Commons, who are interested in mapping, will help us strengthen this initiative. Now, it's also important, in the context of this conference and beyond, to realize that Haiti was and remains a clear outlier. Indeed, we were very lucky with the fact that we had open information security and sort of government oversight. All this played a really important role, and it truly was an open effort as a result. Now, contrast this to crisis mapping projects in places like Pakistan or Afghanistan or the Sudan, Liberia, and Burma. Clearly, there are some important challenges here that we all need to address also at this international conference on crisis mapping. So as we all plan for the future, we can and very much should be inspired by the disaster response to Haiti. But we must be careful not to use this response as the only model for crisis mapping as we move forward. And in fact, like I mentioned, the title of this conference is Haiti and then beyond. So I think that's why many senior policymakers are here today. They recognize and want to address and take advantage of these new opportunities, and they understand as well that some challenges necessarily come with exploring some of these new technologies and these new ideas. Key members of the technology community, that's many of you here, are also here because you want to learn and engage and find out how to be more reliable, more effective partners in this humanitarian space. And our seasoned humanitarian and human rights practitioners are also here in the auditorium, and many of them participated in last uh, yesterday's uh, crisis mapping training session because I think they realize that it's up to them also to take the initiative to expand their own skill set and leverage these new technologies that are coming online. I mentioned that some of the key volunteers, not only from Haiti, but also volunteers from the response in Chile and Pakistan are also in the, in the room here. They've made time to be here for very important reasons, because they want to formalize and professionalize their role in this crisis mapping space. And many of these volunteers are looking to the humanitarian community for mentorship. So there's will on clearly all sides. The final set of uh, audience members here are clearly the research community and the media. And both are here because they want to take this innovation and this inspiration and bring it back to the classroom and also share with a broader audience, which is a critical role. So I think it's fair to say, and I think you'll agree with me, when I, when I say that we have many of the right people in the room today to catalyze the collaboration and the partnerships that are needed to make all of us more effective and adaptive actors in the, in the humanitarian space. And I think the, the opportunity is, is well within our grasp. And obviously, this opportunity would not be possible were it not for every single one of you choosing to make the time to be here right now. So thank you very much for making the time for joining us, because clearly, as you'll see in the next few hours, you are the conference. You are participating, and you're actually, this is a user journey of the conference, if you'd like. 
I also need to want to thank our colleagues, um, our sponsorship colleagues, who provided us with some tremendous support to the Crisis Mappers Network to make this annual uh, conference on crisis mapping possible. These are our good friends. If you do see them in the um, audience, please, uh, and during the breaks, please take some time and just uh, thank them in person. Like last year, our co-organizing institutions are the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative and John Carroll University, so many, many thanks indeed to both institutions. I'd also like to thank my colleague Jen Zemke, who is my fellow co-organizer for this conference for the second year, and if it were not for Jen suggesting the idea of having a crisis mapping conference three years ago. I don't think this would happen, so thanks, Jed, for a really brilliant, incredibly brilliant idea. Finally, quickly express my, my huge gratitude to our uh, volunteers. They have once again gone above and beyond, and I think in many ways, as you saw, saved the day. That's where we were trying to deal with some technical issues. So please help me quickly to thank everybody who I've just mentioned um, right now. Thank you. Okay, on with the show. So we have some really exciting, a really exciting lineup of presentations for you this morning. We're going to kick off with what we call Ignite Talks. If you're not familiar with Ignite Talks, they are five-minute presentations apiece. Each speaker gets a total of 20 slides. Each slide gets automatically forwarded uh, every 15 seconds, and we're going to have all these presentations back to back, so there's absolutely no, no stopping at all. So it's either going to be incredibly entertaining or a complete mess. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Um, that's scheduled for right now um, in about five minutes. The first session of Ignite Talks are going to focus on Haiti and then go a bit broader. The second session was meant to look at crisis mapping beyond Haiti, and it will, 9 out of 10, will definitely, looking at some of the challenges and opportunities uh, that we have presented um, for crisis mapping beyond Haiti. So, okay, last but not least, um, in between the sessions, there's, we've deliberately made plenty of time for you to network and to take this time to, to, you don't always come together at the same time in the same place, so definitely leverage that. And uh, it will give you a time to also engage in person with the speakers who you're going to see momentarily. And we will also have some, we're very, very happy to have some special uh, remarks from the UN Assistant Secretary General, Dr. Che, who is the first um, Chief Information Technology Officer of the United Nations Secretariat. So we'll have his opening remarks in between the two Ignite sessions. And we have for this year's conference our keynote speaker, Mr. Kurt Jean Charles, who is the CEO of a Haitian software company called Solutions. They were incredibly active in the disaster response to Haiti and became very close partners with a number of us volunteering in the disaster response. So my colleague Jen Zemke will be introducing both of our distinguished guests more formally right before their presentations. Finally, last but not least, we do have a very exciting um, set of technology platforms and other presentations in the technology and analysis fair for this year. Definitely make time this afternoon after the second Ignite uh, talk sessions to go there. There's a lot of really interesting crisis mapping projects uh, on display. You can interact, you can try out the projects yourself, the platforms, ask questions, and see how to partner if that's something that seems um, uh, like a good idea in terms of what you do. So last, definitely last, if you're planning to tweet and or blog, please do so. And if you could also add the hashtag ICCM2010, that would be very, very helpful. Also, by all means, make use of the crisismappers.net website. You can either post your blogs there or cross-post them if that's what you're interested in doing. There's also a live chat feature on the crisismappers.net website, which would allow you to interact and discuss the presentations as they're happening. So feel free to make use of that. I think we're all set. Thank you for your patience. We're going to get the uh, first speaker out in just a few minutes. Thanks again, team. Take care.